please stop copy and pasting your machine learning codes from one project to another and potentially rewriting the codes and duplicating the efforts. Did you know that with some recently added features in Azure Machine Learning, you can make any single machine learning steps as a reusable component and share that step across different teams, different machine learning projects, machine learning workspaces, and even across different subscriptions. This one is pretty cool, so make sure you're tuning in and let's go. Hello everyone, this is MG and welcome to this video which we are going to cover what is Azure Machine Learning Component, which is a recent feature added that can help you to have your machine learning steps, any steps, as a self-contained piece of code which is reusable and can be shared among different Azure Machine Learning pipelines, different workspaces and even projects. So let's check it out. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. So what is Azure Machine Learning Component? So as you can see here, consider Azure Machine Learning Component as a self-contained piece of code. What does that mean? If you remember, we had a video about Azure Machine Learning Pipeline and within each pipeline that you define, you have multiple steps. Let's say you have a pipeline that there's one step which is data ingestion, the second step is data pre-processing or data prep, the third one is training a model, validating, scoring, so on and so forth. So each individual step that you have in a pipeline can be a component. So a component, let's say training model component or data ingestion component, data preparation component. So these components, each of them, they will have an input, have an output, and the code absolutely that does the stuff execution, all processing here, and some metadata. So what is metadata? As you can see here, each component should have a name. For example, in this example, generic text processor, that's the name of this com component. Uh, the version, you can versionize actually these components. And the nice thing about component is you can consider this like a function. Usually when you have a function, you have input and output of that function, and there is a code that is running inside that function. So it's very similar to a function, but here because it's a self-contained piece of code, you can versionize it. If I have text processor component, I can have version, version 1, version 2, or v2, v3, so you can keep update that. And because it's a self-contained piece of code as a component, it can be um, tested with the separate unit tests, and it can be versionized, it can be maintained, and of course, it can be even shared among multiple projects or teams, multiple Azure Machine Learning workspaces. So you certainly save time and efficiency in aspect of not duplicating the efforts. Someone has designed a pre-processing component, just grab it as a self-contained piece of code, provide your input, and grab the output and push it to another component or your other certain codes. So each component has metadata, we talked about that, an interface, which is the input and output, the specification, and comment code and environment. So definitely there is a code inside here, for example, Python that does processing here. You have to define the environment that these components need to get executed. For example, there's a Conda environment or there's a Docker image that is the environment needed for actually this component to get executed. How you can create or, or trigger these components within a pipeline? Again, you need to have a pipeline in place because components are a pieces of the pipeline. You can see here, for example, on the left side, there's a pipeline with multiple components. Each of these boxes are components, different components. So you can have them with CLI, Python SDK, or even from UI. Let's say your codes are in, in DevOps, in repository, in GitHub. You can load them using the UI, create your component there. So why should I use component then? First of all, that's a very well-defined uh, interface. 
that means there's a logic behind there's an input output there's no vague unclear black box here and it removes the complexity of dealing with the code stuff inside you just design it once and you define it as a component you're good to go you can just call it trigger it and use it for any specific use case the second thing is you can share it this is great that you have the ability to share the components and you can reuse it as a building block of your pipeline with any machine learning use case and share it as i said across different pipelines workspaces even subscriptions and the last but not least i mentioned that already version control you can have version one version two version three of these components and keep adding this up that will give you the compatibility and reproducibility with your um, machine learning use cases and of course it is also unit testable because that's a self-contained piece of code so let's go through an example that how with using i'm gonna go through a python sdk example and i will add the link of that notebook to the video description so to see how we can define these components we register it in azure workspace and let's see how it works end to end so here is my azure machine learning workspace and you can see there's an icon called component i have created nothing yet that's why it's empty and you can see with the ui you can create one it's gonna ask me where is your source code is it github devops so on and so forth or local files you just grab it from there and register it here let's do it actually through the python sdk to code actually my component within a pipeline so let me go through the example that i have it already open mm, jobs pipelines and i think this one is the one i'm looking for there you go and i have already executed the code so it's running and hopefully by the end of the video the results would be ready so the first thing that i did i'm using by the way python sdk version 2 of azure ml so these are the required libraries needed to get imported for creating pipeline creating component loading a created component uh, having different ways to actually authenticate to my Azure ML through ML clients and we'll see how we'll use it when we import it so I'm using the default Azure credential if that gonna stop working it will go to this accept here which is opening up interactive browser for me to authenticate it didn't for me I ran it so it was able to grab the token just using the default Azure credential so now I can use this credential which is here defined to connect to my azure ml and call it ml client then but whatever i'm going to do from now with my azure ml i refer to this object actually so uh i previously ran this let me run it again oh actually i have it in another notebook or another workspace i'm running right now that was the wrong one let me open it back again okay there you go scroll up so yes from here i was able to get the credentials and then i ran this code which is connecting to my workspace and then i need cpu machine for data preparation and then gpu for training model so what we are going to do actually we are going to use the well-known keras data set for minist which is i think the handwritten digits that we're going to actually classify them that's image classification uh, with convolutional neural network but this is just an example that we use gpu cluster for training and cpu for pre-processing so we want to have three components or three steps in the pipeline first data preparation which is prep here and we have to code second training the model the second component and the third component is scoring the model so moving forward where is the data that's actually an open open data so this is the path and with doing so i define it as an input again it's a definition in python sdk v2 of azure ml when you define an input you are creating a connection or connector to your source data you are not duplicating or, or moving the data right so it is saving cost then i got the connection to my data and that's the time i can load the components or the source code of those components where they are i have my preparation component and train component the first two prep train they are inside these folders prep prep component and i am importing from there 
let me show you this is the data preparation component and as you know each component has a code right with just having this beautiful command here command component I'm saying to Azure ML that hey this is the code that I want to specify for my component and here are some metadata about it what is the name of my component it's, it's prep I'm creating the version 1 what it does uh, the environment remember I told you the conda environment needed to execute this component where is that conda it is already here let's open it you can see that these are the packages needed to have the prep preparation component running awesome so again I'm referring to these building blocks that we're talking about the environment here and the code so now here's the code I'm not going through that it's just an example of converting and doing some pre-processing over the images so I have it here coming back to the main code similarly I'm calling the same way the train component which is here if I open it you can see that I have train component that is calling train.py so if I open train component here you can see that it's calling the train function the same way I'm creating this component and this function is coming from train.py let's open it and this is the training data just splitting into test validation uh, creating a convolutional neural network adding some uh, convolutional layers dropping out some of them and creating the loss function metrics so on and so forth and some plotting some of the metrics there and logging through ml flow so going back to the main model code so now you know we are importing these two components and the other component that we have which is the last one is a score component and here we can define and load the component through yaml file let's check it out score.yaml there you go you can see that it is giving a name this is the name of the component the display name what are the inputs outputs where we're going to put them again remember score.py each component can have inputs and outputs so through yaml i'm defining them here is the function of the scoring by itself that actually does the inferencing and the prediction for me and condo yaml is the environment needed to get installed for doing the scoring now since we have the components in order to execute them and register them we have to define them within a pipeline so let's build a pipeline i have a pipeline with three components data training and score so each of them we know what they do and we went through that very quickly this is now the way with python sdk v2 that you can define a pipeline you say at pipeline what is the compute the default one you're going to run that's a cpu compute we we actually called it from here let me scroll up there you go the cpu compute target is named cpu cluster i have already created this and i have it in my workspace scrolling down and here is how my pipeline gonna be configured so i'm defining that through a def function which says that here's the name of the pipeline and my pipeline is expecting an input what is that it's an input data the mnist data set right so that input data should go to the first component which is preparation so i'm calling my prep component and say that hey here's the input data coming in which is the input of my pipeline then I want to train so I'm calling the training component and say that grab the input from the output of preparation so the output of prep gonna be the input of training this is what I'm doing and I'm gonna say that for training go with GPU you see that how flexible I am with defining different compute for executing different components one with CPU one with GPU and last but not least the same thing for a scoring i'm gonna say i do have the input data coming in and input model as well which are the output of previous steps and then i say that just this is my pipeline job defining that and here is the data which we created the connection at the beginning here where is it there you go so this is the input data and when i have my pipeline defined so I have something to say that hey this is the input go ahead and execute the pipeline which is here 
So I ran it and I saw the pipeline that executed and I submitted the pipeline and you can see I'm waiting this to be running and it is giving me a URL so I can check that out. Let's see. There you go. So you can see that the preparation is done, training is done and now it is scoring. Each of these are components and they're very similar to what we checked, right? Look at the logo, input, output. I have this logo, input and output going to the next component. So I can even drag them to show you more. So you can see for prep data, I am actually using a CPU cluster for training, which took like three minutes. I'm using GPU cluster. And the last one is the scoring. So going back to my code in the notebooks. Oh, I have to open it again. That's fine. Oh, actually, it's here. So the last part that I'm waiting for the pipeline to be finished to run this, but I can show you how it's going to work to register these components because I want to keep them, save them, not just one time running so I can reuse them and share these components. This is the main benefit, right? So how you can register it? Well, this very simple code is saying that connect to your Azure Mail workspace, which is the object, object we already put the credentials. And in the components of this Azure ML, check if there's a prep data component. If it's not there, then create one or update it to a better version. So first time if I run this, there is no registered component. So it will register this prep data component with the given name. And I can do the similar thing for training component and even uh, a scoring component as well. Oh, perfect. It just shows that after 22 minutes, my pipeline end to end is done. Let's check this out. Let me pick up my account. It should show my pair. There you go. Perfect. So now the scoring part is done. I can even check out the outcome. You can see the metrics of my model, which is good one, 90% accuracy. And I can see the overview of the job, how long it took, and the rest of the metadata related to this component. Now the last code that I just executed, I want to now register this let's say one of these components, which is the first component, the prep, right? So I ran this once again, done, go to the components again to check if it's there or not. Let me actually move this. Sorry, I was in the wrong Azure workspace. Let me go to components. There you go. Remember when I checked this part, there was nothing, right? So the prep data came here, created by me just right now. Yeah, it's pretty late here now. <laughs> and I click on prep data, you can see that I can have this prep data get reused, upgraded, archive it, download the code and everything, and again, do the definition. What is this? What is the environment getting used? What does it do? And I can check out the version. There's just one version so far, the code. This is the code, remember we went through that, now it's archived here, and the jobs that has been used is component after registration, which we haven't used it yet. This is fantastic. So that's all about this video. A strength doesn't come from what you can do. A strength comes from overcoming the things that you thought you couldn't. See you next time, everyone.